uh, information that you need to know, about uh, an average 60 million sites will come out on Google and majority of them are um, useless information or misleading information. So we think that uh, during, these all, uh, during these information sites, we think that uh, majority of them are inaccurate and can be misleading that can affect our, our learning. And also, the, uh, second, secondly, is the biased information. And we have two examples for this. And the first example is about uh, politics. Uh, in politics, there are, in US and Korea and other countries, there are about two or more government types, which are Republican and Democratic. And these, each side of uh, government can have their own uh, one-sided information, and which can be biased in um, other ways. And another is the biased information in history. In history, uh, there are each government or country has their own perspective of how they think about the uh, history that they have, have had in the past. And one of the examples is that we are currently and right now having is against Japan and Korea about Tokdo. Uh, Tokdo is one of the good examples that we thought of uh, uh, biased information because both countries are using their own perspectives on uh, use of uh, how they think about the territory of Tokdo. And in their own textbooks and history textbooks, this misleading and one-sided information has actually um, affected uh, Korean's uh, standardized test, which is Suneng in the past, where uh, questions about Tokdo came, Tokdo, Tokdo came out and was an inaccurate question or can say misleading question uh, that has affected our information. And lastly, uh, about social media, about about 80% of uh, the United States population is using social media uh, nowadays. And social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are, uh, has a lot of influence in um, accurate and, and inaccurate information that we have. Uh, the benefits of social media can be uh, fast and uh, widespread information that we have in our internet and social media, however, uh, misleading and inaccurate false information is one of the huge things that we have currently in uh, Facebook and social other social medias. Um, um, then we'll move to communication and collaboration. Uh, for the past years, people have valued the benefit of communicating and interacting with individuals. Uh, they have been sailing on ships for three months, rode on horses through curvy ancient roads, and hiked up mountains just to exchange ideas from each other. And because we have treasured the exchange of ideas between each other, we have developed many methods to engage people all around the world, uh, which includes social media and the internet and tangible inventions that we have right now. And before moving on to specifics, I would want to value the value of communication and collaboration. Why is communication and collaboration essential in life? In the world that we live in today, people are exposed to daily conversations and group works, and companies now value the benefits of bonds and ties with other countries and companies. And it is almost impossible to avoid these kinds of interactions with others. However, what makes communication and collaboration the most major is critical thinking. Critical, critical thinking is basically on independent thinking with reasoned judgment and actions consisting of the ability to reason, including logos, pathos, and ethos, and the will to do what they feel is right through their own thinking process. Critical thinking is composed of creativity and logic to persuade others about the ideas people come up with, and involving both inductive and deductive reasoning, people come up with modified facts they believe it is right. And adding on to that, there is analysis and problem solving in creative ways and innovating and per innovative and perplex solutions to challenge people might face in daily lives, and the list goes on. With all these various values critical and communication can give, these messes should support the school curriculum as, we, as well. Critical thinking and education. One of the critical ways education can collaborate and uh, value of critical thinking and communication is to make learners who are well informed but most importantly create students who have the will to create important, useful and powerful thinking that can apply to the modern world and can influence the modern world. 
However, in the modern education curriculum, there are lack of activities that students could basically show off their skills on these areas that are needed for the society. By just looking at the Korean society, we can just see the lack of opportunities students are given to practice these skills. In the majority of the classes that Korea, uh, Korea provides, and even international schools, they do not provide enough hours for the students to interact with each other. Uh, for example, in autonomous times, when we use in public schools, when we use the autonomous time to study, we usually want to interact with other kids to exchange ideas or to learn. However, the advisors in class usually inform them to shush during the classes, which stops the interaction of minds. However, I should. However, I believe that this should be stopped and. And I believe critical thinking and communication is the only way for humans to interact with each other. And it is a process where exchange of ideas happens, which builds up new ideas. And it is too much of a waste for just the fine qualities to learn flow away from the student's educational life. And in conclusion, the school shouldn't be the limit for students' learning experiences. It should be a place where learners will acquire the abilities to prepare them for the near future. Since Communication collaboration has been a huge driving force in the modern society. Schools should conduct the various of activities that will give huge chances and innovation to the world we live in today, which makes the ability to make various directions differently to create uniqueness to the international world. So our final quiz of what schools are focused on is digital citizenship. So now we are living in a digital world where we evolve our most of our living around digital things like internet. So, so we need to teach the children of how digital citizenship, how we are to be like responsible, responsible. So I want to first talk about what citizenship is. So citizenship means there is the status of citizens who has with duties and and duties and what is it? Duties and yeah, duties and rights. So we need to teach them what their duties as a digital citizenship is. So there are nine elements of digital citizenship and one is digital access, which means that they're allowed to access the digital world with any electronic devices. And secondly, digital commerce, which means that now many people are buying in eBay, Amazon, and like other like internet like commerce <laughs> websites. So they need to provide like electronic buying, safety, and like those kind of stuff. And digital communication, which means we're exchanging our information with other like people around the world. And digital literacy, which means like a professor Pastor said that every 18 months, like technolo technology are develop developing and we are not able to like catch up with it. So we need to teach them how they need to use those technology. And digital ad etiquette, which is like every other like etiquette that we should follow. It's just the like basic manners for people to follow in digital world. And digital laws and digital rights and responsibilities, they're, they're duties that we need to follow. And they're laws like not, no cyberbullying, no like illegal downloading, no pornography or like no, no gambling, no gambling. And digital rights and responsibilities like, like it's just connecting with digital assets and digital law. And digital health and wellness, which means that our like eye safety about looking into like digital world too much, and how we should be focusing on like you know nowadays we're connecting digital electronics <coughs> with our health benefits, and digital security, which means that it's combining all the stuff that we should provide protection among digital world. Yeah. Thank you. These are our citations. Yeah. <laughs>